Our analyst coached at Howard for 11 years. In his playing days, he helped Towson State reach the national championship in 91 and the national quarterfinals in 92. It's a pleasure to welcome Mike Jones. Mike, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me back. The winner advances to the Region 20 championship. The loser's season is over. A win for Howard will likely result in the program's second trip to nationals via an at-large selection or the region's automatic bid. With losses to Howard and Suffolk, Anne Arundel needs to win the Region 20 championship to make it to nationals. The Howard-Anne Arundel rivalry has been evenly matched. They've split their last eight meetings dating back to 2010. Anne Arundel ended Howard's season in last year's Region 20 semifinal. Howard is four days removed from a blowout loss to Essex. Entering that game, the Dragons were undefeated in the region. Coach, how can Howard bounce back against Anne Arundel? If the Dragons can repeat their performance from earlier in the season against Anne Arundel, scoring 11 goals, they should be okay. Uh, it would be a little more difficult without Austin Mitchell, who's out with an injury suffered against Essex. Somebody like Jerron Brooks is going to have to step up. Possession at the faceoff X, good ball control, is key for them today. Defensively, holding Anne Arundel to six goals in the first game was a great effort. They're going to need to do something similar today. Anne Arundel knocked out CSM in the first round to secure a rematch with Howard. If recent history is any indication, Anne Arundel's regular season loss to Howard is a positive. You have to go back to 2008 to find the last time Howard or Anne Arundel beat each other twice in the same season. Adding to the intrigue, leading scorer Derek Davis did not play in the regular season loss to Howard. Coach, what do you expect to see from Anne Arundel? Possession will be key for Anne Arundel as well. Howard has a lot of offensive weapons, and the more Anne Arundel can hang onto the ball and put pressure on the goalkeeper, Andrew Cilio, and the defense, the better off they'll be. Traditionally, Anne Arundel's defense has been their strength. They've had good individual defensemen who can control their attackmen. With the size of the Riley brothers and the athleticism of Cody Martin, they're going to need to step up today to slow down the Dragons' offense. Playoff lacrosse is next. Howard battles Anne Arundel. Let's go to the highlights. First half, Howard with an early 2-1 lead. Josh Venturelli on the run, puts it away. Nice alley dodge. Good individual effort by Venturelli. Jerron Brooks, matched up with a short stick, makes his move. Up top to Scott Dagnan-Leach, places it high, three unanswered from Howard. Nice overhand, technically sound shot from Dagny Leach. Daniel Bishop won the next faceoff. Andrew Duffy up against Kenneth Robinson. Robinson knocks it loose. Still up for grabs. Three blue jerseys on the ground ball. Robinson hammers Duffy's knee and he goes down. Hartle wins the ground ball. Duffy's hurt and the official is right there. Until there's a break in the action, they're not going to stop for an injured player. Somebody else should have gone back on defense. Anne Arundel capitalizes on the turnover and ends a 10-minute scoring drought. After a Howard turnover, Anne Arundel's back on offense, 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter. There's no second slide to the crease. Leaves the attackman wide open. And Thomas Quarter cuts the lead to one. The first three Anne Arundel goals have all been assisted. 5-4 Howard now. Daniel Bishop wins the faceoff to himself. He's won nine of 11 faceoffs so far. Anne Arundel clawing for a possession. Bishop gets it back to Jerron Brooks. Outruns two blue jerseys, and Brooks finds a home for the overhand rep. That was a scrappy ground ball by Bishop, and nobody stopped Brooks from going to the goal. Extra man unit on the field for Howard. Brooks, Dagnan Leach. Brooks. The offense is standing still there. Makes it an easy pickoff for the defense when no one is moving. Other end of the field, Anna Rundle still a man down. Nathan Neal sees daylight. Looking for a better angle, Neal with a man down tally. No initial slide that time. Neal beats him underneath, and it's an easy finish with no slide. 6-5 Howard, three minutes till the half. Jerron Brooks takes it to the middle of the field, finishes the ball. Two goals, two assists already for Brooks. Jerron is just taking the game over by himself. 1-15 till the half. Howard is a man up. Cody Martin, guarded by Robertson. There's no need to make that skip pass there. Sloppy passing, and nobody's moving their feet, causes the turnover. Howard's extra man offense, 0 for 2 with two turnovers. Other end of the field, we're at even strength. 30 seconds till halftime. Hartle on his knees. Finds Reese Sullivan, low to low release. Terrific end of the half for Anne Arundel. We have a one goal game. Second half, extra man opportunity for Anne Arundel now. 14 in blue. Hartle, top of the box. Makes the off ball move to the far alley. Calls for the ball, ties the game. Terrific play from the sophomore out of Centerville. Anne Arundel moving the ball. Good ball movement there. And a sneak from X for Sullivan. Anne Arundel takes their first lead of the game. After forcing a turnover, Howard's offense takes the field. Restart after an offsides call. Dragons are a man up. 
Dylan Riley finds an opening, ties the game. Big time shot from the freshman out of Windsor, Ontario. After an Anne Arundel failed clear, Howard's in the midst of a one minute possession. Brooks can't complete it to Riley, ground ball. Jerron Brooks makes up ground on Hartle. Martin muscles him away from the ball. It's going to be Howard's ball. Later in the possession, Anthony Pagnotta takes on the short stick. Pagnotta sees the double team, but still tries to muscle his way through. Doesn't work. Causes the turnover. Other end of the field, John Jennings goes after Martin. Jennings splits two dragons, and Martin lays him out, forces the turnover, and the officials stop the action to attend to Jennings. Howard is looking to make the turnover count. Pagnotta. Brooks takes on the short stick, gets above goal line extended, and gives Howard the lead. Two unanswered from the Dragons. Howard won the face off, then turned it over. 23 turnovers on the day for the Dragons. Andrew Cilio with the save, and he controls the rebound. Fast break for the Dragons. Reese Williams, Jared Riley retreats, moves towards the middle, turns and fires. Howard has scored three unanswered to regain control. There's a lot of individual effort. HCC is not playing good team offense, though. Fourth quarter, Anna Rundle keeps the ball moving. Thomas Quarter at the X. Derek Davis now. He scores. The Pioneers' leading scorer gets his first of the day and cuts the deficit to one. Davis goes back to work up against Martin. Cody Martin wins that battle. Good double team. Seems like Howard's playing good team defense at this point, causing turnovers and getting the ball to the other end of the field. Martin. Riley. No chance for the goalie. With 10 minutes remaining, Howard takes a two-goal lead. After a Howard turnover, Anne Arundel's back on offense. 7.30 to play. Quarter. Sullivan completes it to Nathan Neal. Quick catch and shoot one goal game. That's a great look by Sullivan to feed Neal. We're inside of six minutes. Crucial man down clear for Howard. Anne Arundel doubling Brooks. Long pass to Williams. Unable to connect. Two pioneers on the ground ball. Jennings emerges with it. Jennings hustles into the box, draws the pole, frees up Davis, tight ropes the crease, and ties the game. Two fourth quarter goals for Anne Arundel's leading scorer. Sloppy passing on the clears leads to an unsettled situation for Anne Arundel. They seem to be capitalizing on all of their possessions. 234 remaining after a pioneer turnover. Here comes Brooks on the clear. Brooks absorbs contact and draws the flag. 26 seconds left on the extra man, Riley to Riley. Martin goes up top, and another man up turnover for Howard. Sloppy passing again. Looks like the same skip pass we saw in the last extra man. Anne Arundel wasn't able to do anything with it. One minute remaining. Brooks hits it off the goalie. Huge ground ball. Brooks wins it for Howard. Feeds to Riley. Robertson drops him. It's loose again. And the officials call a slash on Dylan Riley. Anne Arundel will be man up with a game on the line. Anne Arundel works it around. Neil. Davis. What a save by Andrew Cilio. Peter Emery wins the ground ball. Huge man down defensive stand for the Dragons. Nice save by Cilio. Coming up big when he needs to. 19 seconds. Howard's still a man down, but has a chance to win it. Brooks dodges to Martin. No, he hits the side of the goal. If Martin would have been able to move his feet, increase his angle a little bit, he may have been able to score there. We're going to overtime. First team to score wins, and here's the OT faceoff. Daniel Bishop comes up big for Howard. What a dominant day at the X. Bishop has won 84% of his faceoffs, 22 for 26 at the X. Brooks with the ball and his stick, attacks the shorty. To Riley, broken up by Robertson, and it's gonna be Anne Arundel ball. Riley got pushed there, bad call. The official called a crease violation, but he was clearly pushed into the crease. Nine and blue, Neal, with the ball in his stick for Anna Rundle, goes after the short stick, gets underneath, and he scores. Anna Rundle wins for the second straight year. The Pioneers end Howard's season. Good defense by Rays, but Neal's just able to score on a very low angle shot. Coach, what are your final thoughts on this one? HCC got away from their quick ball movement to the backside offense. Even though they scored 11 goals, most of them were on individual efforts. Not a bad defensive effort from the Dragons, but it just wasn't enough. Anne Arundel advances to the Region 20 Championship.